Morning Calls meeting back to order from our recess last two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Um, we don't have an official agenda, but we do have a few things that we need to get through. I think I wanted to start with um, any outstanding questions based on our follow-up questions to Ms. Brenda King uh, that we had from our last meeting. Um, just kind of address those first. I know that she has a little meeting. Uh, I don't remember what time, but be perhaps before we conclude. So I want to get to that first. Then we also, um, not only based on those answers, but perhaps um, regardless, we need to address potential hearing date and then maybe potential subpoena that people were thought of because it's a call papers. And um, we can just go from there. But I, I definitely want to give all that a moment to that. Um, so, with that, what questions or comments do we have on that agenda? Well, I have uh, some comments I'd like to make. Yeah. And they sort of cover a multitude of. Make sure your mic is on. And that looks if I may cool. interrupt, Mr. Lofton, I'm going to apologize. I do think it might be important to um, acknowledge that Mr. Lofton is here in Mr. Henry's place and that Mr. Henry has filled out the proxy paperwork. Okay. I, I thought my mic was on when you were doing that. But Ms. how do you say your name one more time? Lofton. Mr. Lofton is here in place of Mr. Henry as a proxy for this proceeding today and the potential, any potential future proceedings uh, on the same matter. Um, I don't believe proxy has been set for any other election board meetings or any of the testing we have to do next week or, or tomorrow. Right, tomorrow. That's my understanding as well. Okay. Thank you. All right. Go ahead. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Guy Lofman. I'm, I'm serving as proxy for David Henry concerning this matter uh, from which he felt it was appropriate to have somebody else step in. Um, I, I practiced law for Monroe County, in Monroe County for 40 years. I've, I was on the election board previously, so uh, he felt that experience would be, might be helpful, and I was glad to, to help out. Uh, by way of context, let me, I've, I've looked at everything that I that have had an occasion to, had the opportunity to. Uh, since I was uh, asked to do this. And here's what I understand, is the records show that Mr. David Wolf Bender filed to run as a common council candidate in District 6 in the upcoming primary. Uh, a February 17th, uh, 2023 uh, IDS article reported that Mr. Bender did not live at the address in District 6 at which he said he lived in his candidacy declaration. Uh, election board member Donovan Garlett, as I understand it, has requested an, inv in, an investigation. County attorney Molly Turner King has provided a very helpful memorandum of applicable law. Uh, and I have, have looked up and found a portion of the statutes which I think is important and it's Indiana Code 3-14-1-1, which states in pertinent part, a person who knowingly, two, or part two, files a declaration of candidacy, candidacy knowing any part thereof to be falsely made, commits a class A misdemeanor. Based on my understanding of the circumstances that I've talked about, uh, it appears to me that Mr. Bender probably violated this code, IC 3-14-1-1-2, unless I'm convinced that this is inappropriate during this meeting within the election board, uh, I intend to move that we set a date for an investigation and invite Mr. Bender in person and or by counsel to present evidence and argument. Uh, I'm, I've got an a letter that I've prepared that I want to show everybody and anybody in the public who wants to see it uh, that that would move us toward that goal. Uh, under these circumstances, I see no need to subpoena witnesses. I do see need to have a hearing, uh, have an, an open hearing at which anybody in the public or anybody else or and or who wants to can testify. 
but I don't think we need to compel anybody to testify because I don't think it makes any sense to try to compel Mr. Bender, who we're accusing of a crime. He'll have the opportunity, but I don't want to subpoena him, which puts him in an awkward Fifth Amendment position. Uh, and, and I'm comfortable with the IDS allegations being sufficient to make me think, I think we should refer this to the prosecutor. Um, and then we don't have to figure out how to issue subpoenas. And frankly, I, I practiced law in 40 years and I'm still not a very good investigator, in, you know, looking at witness statements and all that, whereas the prosecutor has very professional investigators inside their offices and inside the, uh, in the um, police department who I think can do a thorough job. And if the investigate, if the prosecutor says, we're gonna prosecute, that's the prosecutor's job. If the prosecutor says, we don't think there's enough here to prosecute, that's their job. But my job isn't to determine prosecutorial merit. My job is to determine whether it looks to me like a criminal act might have occurred, and if so, refer to the prosecutor. So uh, that's what I've, that's my, my statement and and here for your uh, convenience is the the letter I suggest sending uh, which maybe I'll just read into the record I'm I'm half done uh, uh, well if you don't if you if you would let's hold off on reading that into the record only because we haven't seen anything or had an opportunity to read it but I would like to thank you number one because uh, my experience is typically attorneys serve only to make things more complicated. And it seems as if <laughs> you're going down a road of, of not doing that. Molly, I, I do apologize, but typically that is what attorneys do. That's my um, experience. Uh, thank you. So I'm glad you agree. Um, I, I, I don't disagree with anything you've said. I can well, tell that's, you that that's good. Um, at, at face. There are some, some kind of complications that we definitely need to, to iron out. Um, and so I appreciate that. Let's just hold off on reading this in just for now because I haven't had a, a chance to read it and I know Clerk Brown I hasn't have. either. Um, but I think we're all coming probably to the same, you know, end of the tunnel here anyway. But I do want to give everyone an opportunity to ask about any potential questions on that final memo that we did receive. Um, and then I do have a comment about, um, or, or just, I, I want to make a point for the record about the email we received like 10 minutes, 15 minutes before, the, I don't know, it was it was a lot, maybe longer than that, but we did just receive that from um, Mr. Bender's counsel. So any questions about the memo? <coughs> Excuse me. I, I don't have any questions about the memo. I didn't agree with everything in the memo, but I don't have questions. Understood, understood. Okay, and I, um, I, I don't think I have any questions either, I appreciate the time taken there um, to get this to us. Um, my only question is, you mentioned, uh, Molly, about there were four codes we cited last meeting. And you noted that the one about voter reg was really just NA, not applicable in this instance, which I can respect. But explain to me in your memo, you noted that only one of the other three were potentially, um, I don't even know if this is the right word, could be up for prosecution. I don't, I don't wanna butcher a, a word if I try to add able at the end of it, so. Correct. Um, well, I don't know that the voter registration, I, I don't know that I would say the voter registration statute is inapplicable. So of the four that you identified, only one of them has a criminal of, um, penalty tied to it. And so in the election code under chapter three, article 14, it lists offenses that if violated would constitute a violation of the election law and a criminal offense. And of the four um, code sections identified by the counts or by the election board at the last meeting, the only um, code within article 14 is um, 314.11 and it's the declaration of candidacy. And that is the code statute that Mr. Lofton referred to. And so a violation of that statute's criminal penalty constitutes a, a misdemeanor. So then of the other three, what are our um, 
as Mr. Laughlin said, it's not our job to prosecute. Um, it is our job to just make sure that we do or do not refer that to the proper authorities. I think I'm speaking on behalf of the board in that manner. With regard to the other three, what is our duty and our and or our right with respect to those three potential um, violations of election code? So in um, code section 36531, it says if after the judgment of the election board, um, after a, a hearing with due notice, uh, is the belief of the election board that a person has engaged in or is about to engage in an act that constitutes a violation of a provision of this title, meaning the election code, um, the board shall take the action it considers appropriate under those circumstances. And one of the actions it specifically references is the ability to refer it to a, either the attorney general or the appropriate prosecutor. In this case, it would be a prosecutor. For the other three, um, where there's not a criminal statute, um, it doesn't define what actions, the code section does not define what actions it would, the election board, appropriate actions by the election board. But it does not, the election code does not give the election board the ability to assess fines. So you would not be able to fine Mr. Bender as a result of a violation if you determine such under the three non-criminal statutes. So I think you could publicly sanction him, but other than that, I don't know what action would be a considered appropriate or what action would be available for the election board. So do we not have any at all or we just at this point don't know if there are any because I agree with you I don't believe that any we don't have any authority to fine. Correct. We obviously don't have any authority to jail or publicly tar and feather you know th that's not a thing right. So um, <clears throat> I would um, it would be my intent just so that I'm clear with the with the board to if we as we move forward not just move forward with the one that's criminally uh, potentially able to be referred to a prosecutor but all of the four that we have already identified and then during that time in between the hearing and and now um, should that motion pass uh, if you could look into what our uh, basically what our remedies that are available would be um, and I, at this point, I, I, I think I tend to agree that it's probably just a public statement saying that tisk tisk, right? I would agree with, I think it's, I see it, I am not an attorney, as a public opportunity to, um, for a plausible explanation. I've, I've referred to this a couple of times, if there is a plausible explanation for this there's been a window of time mm -hmm. where you could come out and say this is what happened um this is how it got this far uh and and you know whatever mea culpa for whatever that plausible explanation would be i have not seen anything okay. like that so then, then I would actually argue we don't even need to change our motion. We've already made the motion for what the hearing is about. Um, you're, obviously, it's within your right to make that motion to change it to only the one code that we're looking at at the hearing. But um, you know, <coughs> I would argue that we don't need to make that change because we've cited four things, and that's what the hearing was going to be about. So if there are no other questions on this, I'd like to um, talk about at least revisit the potential date um, and then talk about, which I know you have an opinion on, about the subpoena process. And uh, I think that is an, that's where I differ a little bit in terms of, of what we should or shouldn't do. But I certainly agree um, that we need to talk about it no matter what. So we decided that we were going to do the hearing after primaries and we haven't set an exact date. Um, do we have any suggestions for a date? I would suggest a date that would be um, after we've wrapped up the election, after we've reconciled provisional ballots, we have those summer dates where we're not quite ready for the general. I mean, obviously there's work to be done ordering supplies and things, but that it, because people are already expecting us to meet as, an, as a board. So whether it would be July, the July and August um, 
when does primary wrap, you know, obviously we know what primary day is, but you know, based on the 2022 general, okay, it could be four months, <laughs> which we don't well, want we to don't happen Well, we don't want it again. to be four months. So election day is May 2nd. It is always the first Tuesday after the first Monday, and this year that is May 2nd, which means that the board will be together also on May 4th, mm -hmm. wrapping up the election. We will also um, be together on May 12th to reconcile provisional ballots. Um, I am just going to tell you right now that I am not giving up a planned vacation in the latter part of May, and I will be gone. I would have been uh, appointing a proxy for um, the June 1st meeting. Um, and so the next time, unless you wanted to set something special, the next time would be our meeting July 6th. When is your, um, are you available the week after the 12th or will you be out for that one? So well? we have a clerk's conference that is later this year than normal then in normal years, it would normally be the week of the 12th. I don't have that date in front of me. Okay. Um, it sounds like you wanna do this in June. Well, I was even thinking, you know, depending on if we're reconciling provisionals on the 12th, is there any reason we couldn't do it the week immediately following that? Rather than waiting, that way we just have three board meetings in a row essentially let me let me i uh spent a long time since i reconciled the, the the provisional ballots but my impression is that there usually aren't very many and it's not usually very controversial <laughs> well <laughs> that's fair to say in a municipal it will be there will be a lot fewer than there would be next year in a presidential. Oh, I, but that's yeah. not to say that we won't have any, it's not to say that there wouldn't be discussions and things as we reconcile. They have to be reconciled by that Friday yeah. um, so what before I'm, the end of what business. What I'm thinking out loud is if we go ahead and set the hearing for that day. For which day? For the day we're doing provisionals. That'd be a very, very long day. That we're already going to be here is your point. We're already going to be here. But we and won't be here. We'll be in the other uh, building. Election Central. Well, does that make any difference for this Not purpose? technically, I, I don't think. I'm sure we can have the meeting any place we want. That's where we're meeting. No. But if it's a bad idea, right. I'm not standing up and fighting for a bad no. I, this bad idea. So since you've been we away. Tech issue, they might be mad at us. <laughs> since you've been away, one of the things that's been important to us is to have that provisional reconciliation uh, meeting at Election Central so that we are not moving ballots. So I would feel very, very strongly about okay. keeping it at Election Central. Um, I definitely want to, I want to differentiate the time that we take to close out the election with reconciling provisional ballots and have that be very separate from getting to the heart of whatever happened here. And I am not alleging anything criminal or anything, but whatever the explanation is for whatever we're looking at with respect to the complaint that was filed, I want that to be separate and apart from the, I never want those two mixed together. I, I think everything you all have said is completely convincing and I don't think we should meet on the day we're doing, you're doing provisional ballots either. Thank you for the helping me with more information than I had before. So what, what do the last three weeks of May look like for you? No go? Well, <laughs> let's just be very clear that last week, <laughs> yeah. well, which is Memorial Week, I will not be here. What about- I am I, happy to appoint a proxy. If you want to take it from that uh, last week in, into the June 1st hearing, which would be the meeting of the election board, I'll just have to appoint a proxy no, I'm, I'm asking about the 18th or the 25th, which are two, two other Thursdays in May. That okay. Are... The 18th would be better. I fly out on the 25th, so the 18th would be better. Of, of May. May. Then I'm... that's that's following the election okay, and wrapping up Thursday, the election. Right? We will have already done provisional ballots. So he is referring to your, you can't get to yours fast enough. May 18. Yeah. 
I'm, what I'm trying to figure out is when am I going to California? And that's not oh. really, let me, let me look. Must be nice to be you. Yeah, it, well, our son and his uh, kids live in California, and it is nice to be uh, retired and have kids here and there. Congratulations. Um, so I'm certainly able to put the 18th, I am able to put the 18th on okay. for consideration. Um, the soonest after that for me would be the 8th of June. of June, but I'm happy to appoint a proxy for June 1st. I, I'll have to anyway for the election board meeting. Just for the regular meeting. For the regular meeting. But if we don't have anything for the agenda, because we will have talked about the election at the May meeting, you know, if you want to initiate that on June 1st, I'll just have a proxy. I think I'm going to... I think I'm going to find this. I'm sorry, I don't have a better way to look. Um, Are we, are we just kind of taking down dates? Well, I was just waiting to see if okay. you were able, available Be for the 18th. Because after the 8th of June. I would like to not wait that long. That's why I'm kind of. I got, the imp I got that the impression. But I, I think it's important for all three of us to be there, too. Yeah, and I don't, we don't want a sub proxy. Correct. That's, that's still not it. Uh, Would it be reasonable to hone in on the 18th and it will come out by the April election board meeting if that's not, if there's a conflict and we need to push it out. I know you don't want to. So you're saying just set it and then if we need to. Right. If, if cause we're gonna have an, our April meeting is April 6th. I've got the time of day I'm leaving, but I don't have a date here. And okay. Um, I would just say let's hone in on the 18th then, if you're okay with that, and then if we need to. I, 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 I agree. And will you be able to find that out within Honestly, the next few days? Okay. I, 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 you know, I should have made Connie come with me. <laughs> Because she, my I, wife, I knows. understand. <laughs> I understand. Do one of you want to make the motion? I will make a motion that the hearing be held on May 18th, 2023. I would say one. At 1 p.m. Second. Could you call the roll? Oh, sorry. Um, Proxy Loftman? Yes. Clerk Brown? Yes. Um, uh, board member Gartlitz. Yes. Okay, so that so we've got the board meeting set. We'll um, get that noticed unless we have a change in the next. Was that one o'clock day or so? One. PM, yes, sir. Please. In here. Um, so that brings us to the kind of the next part. Um, that is the discussion of who, what, where, when to subpoena um, to this meeting that we just set to the hearing that we just set. Um, I certainly, my belief is that we need to hear from or see only a couple few things, um, which I think you've kind of already stated. We need to hear from 
and see Mr. Bender. Um, I would argue that we need to see the lease that he himself noted in the original IDS article that was the impetus of the complaint. Um, and then I would say, well, uh, one of the one of the concerns that that uh, Mr. Henry brought up <coughs> in the last couple meetings was that the uh, lease that we have from the current tenants was only the front page. Um, so I would say, while I have no interest personally in hearing from the tenants or the owner, I don't have any problem requesting those documents. I think that would potentially be pertinent to the hearing as to whether or not you know we feel compelled and or comfortable on referring it to prosecution. So I'm kind of looking at it four things, three documents or letters per se, you know, well, two leases, so two documents and then perhaps even um, just a letter from the owners and current tenants stating what they already have. And then obviously Mr. Bender's presence is kind of what I'm thinking. And I don't, um, <clears throat> I, I, I certainly am not gonna shoot down any argument uh, as to whether or not they need to be subpoenaed if we already have them. Um, but my only question would be regarding Mr. Bender himself. So what are the thoughts on that? I am, I am mostly on the same page with you. Um, for transparency and the public and all interested parties, I do feel there might be some value to the owner of the property the person who pays property taxes here in Monroe County. Um, I would never say come here or else, but I do think there might be some value to his coming and in a transparent way say, I don't know this person, never met this person, never went into any kind of agreement, purchase, rental, any kind of agreement with this person. Um, and so, would it, would um, would you feel comfortable asking for just a letter though from that person rather than compelling them to come yeah, here? Yeah, I guess that's why I, I don't want to compel. This person's done nothing wrong. This is a Agreed. person innocently uh, ensnared in whatever this turns out to be. Um, I guess. I, if that's your if you're if that's your preference i will support that it's not that i agree with you the, the, these every other party is completely innocent no matter how you shake the stick they've been kind of mm -hmm. pulled into something whether they were willing or not so it would be it would be my my preference and my argument to give them the the easiest road to get make us whole as possible and so my thoughts would simply be from those two parties, the current tenants and the current owner, a copy of their agreement. Right, right. And then letters from both of them simply right. saying, yeah. I, this guy doesn't live here or does live here. Right, I, will, I definitely don't wanna disturb any tenants. You, yeah. have, you have made arrangements to live in your abode and, and loving living in this country. <laughs> we get to live in peace in, our, in the privacy of our own walls. So I definitely am not trying to entangle any tenant. I am a homeowner. <clears throat> if someone were using my address in a way that I was not privy to, yeah, a party right. to, or any, I would have a couple issues and I would want you to know from me, I have absolutely nothing to do. So you're saying we could get everything from the owner. We don't even need to talk to the tenants. Right. Which is, you're right. right. I mean, we, and if we, I were that owner, I would want to deliver that to you in person so that you and I are on the same page and I can look you in the eye and say, nothing to see here. So your your argument is an invitation rather than a than compelling. Or something. Right. I mean, I'll be, the, the subpoena probably sounds like what we legally have to do. <laughs> no. Uh, no. We can invite them. And then if they show up, we can question them under oath or not under oath. This is... We have, from my perspective, Molly, check me on this. Uh, I don't disagree. Yeah, but, and, and 
But, and I think if we said, you know, hi, we're in the midst of this, if you would be willing to possibly come on uh, May 18th at one o'clock so, and, and talk with us about it, or at least send us a letter saying uh, uh, whether this person lives there and whether they're on the lease and whether they have ever lived there. Uh, either one would be helpful. We'd love to see you in person, but we are not telling you, you must come. Right. That kind of a letter and we see what we get. I'm and, very comfortable with that. Okay. I well, don't have any issue with that. Okay. Uh, and and uh, Molly, would you want to draft such a letter? Um, I can draft a letter. Uh, well, we'd have to send a letter to Mr. Bender stating this is the hearing date, and if you'd like that letter to say we're inviting you or your counsel to come speak on your behalf. Well, we're not there yet. We're okay. just talking about the owner of the home in question. I can draft a letter to the owner um, and, and, ask, the, and the tenants, I would think. And, really. and the tenants saying we have a hearing on this date and we're requesting your appearance. Um, without a subpoena, they are under no obligation to come. And in one other comment that I was just about to make is in regards to subpoenaing documents, you can issue subpoenas for documents that exist. So if a letter already exists saying, okay, this person doesn't live here, you could subpoena that. You cannot ask for the creation of a letter. So you're, you're, you're subpoenaing you things that are in existence. Right. I would oh. never ask. So you couldn't ask the landlord to prepare a letter saying if it is saying who lives there and who doesn't live there. If I gave that impression, that was not. So you're just I'm saying just, that just we clarify. So you're just saying the only thing that we could ask for is the current lease. You could ask for the lease because it's in existence. You couldn't ask them to write you any type of letter. We could ask them that in person should they choose to come. You can include that in your letter, but you wouldn't be able to subpoena a letter. Like if you tell him, exist. yeah, if you tell him, I'm subpoenaing a letter that I want you to draft, you can't do that. Yeah, I don't think we're talking about okay. subpoenaing anything right. from I, them anyway. So. Let, let me try once more. I, number one, I, I don't even want to request them. I want to invite them. I don't want them to feel any agreed. Uh, uh, you know, we're inviting you, uh, and I certainly don't think we can compel them to create a document. But we can Where say did that if come it's from? if it's more. Can, hmm? Where did that come from? Because we asked about, or, or I had mentioned about having a letter in lieu of coming. I said it's just a can we have them have a that. letter if that it's says more convenient for you. Okay, we would be glad <clears throat> to if you sent us a letter. So we have something from the people who own the property and live in the property. In lieu of coming. In lieu of coming. Um, can you ask for that? We can, I think you can include in the letter that we're having a hearing on this date. We are inviting you to appear. You're under no obligation to appear. And if you are unable to appear, but would like to make a statement, this is how you could do it. Perfect. Uh, what's... Do we so, need a motion on making drafting that letter to the owner of the address in question? I will make that motion. I'll second. <laughs> okay. And then, Molly, I would, uh, as discussion prior to the vote, I would ask, could you please circulate that to the board somewhere sh so that we can review it as a draft? Yes. Um, I, so we have a motion and a second on the table. Okay. Proxy um, Lothman? Yes. Uh, Clerk Brown? Yes. Board Member Gartlett? Yes. Okay, so that brings us to uh, Mr. Bender. So I'm not entirely sure if an invitation would work with him. I will make a motion that we should subpoena Mr. Bender. I would hope that he would want to voluntarily, voluntarily appear, but I also feel that we've had enough public meetings, publicly noticed meetings, that if that were on his heart, he would have done so. So I, we don't even need to continue that piece of the discussion. I will make a formal motion Understood. to subpoena David Wolf Bender for the May 18th hearing, 2023, at one o'clock. Okay, so we have you have discussion. Can we have discussion. Well, and can I make one comment that the election board may want to consider in light of this discussion? If a subpoena is issued to Mr. Bender, his counsel would have the right to take that to file what's called a motion to quash, in essence, asking a court to not ha allow him to not comply with the subpoena. 
If his attorney files a motion to quash, that's not, that is going to make a May 18th hearing date not possible. Well, okay, so. Because if his attorney files the motion to quash, it's gonna go into a court and we're gonna have to wait for the court to set a hearing um, to decide whether Mr. Bender would have to compel, um, comply with that subpoena. Well, that's a whole other interesting uh, realm that we've been, been in. Um, I made the comment last meeting that I don't understand all that in the first place, but um, are you saying that it wouldn't, the May 18th meeting wouldn't be possible because we have to wait on the court or because they have some unbreakable legal standing that the quash will be granted? I think you would have to wait until the court decided if the motion is, or if the subpoena is to be quashed, and in order for them to decide such, they would set a hearing. So you'd have to wait for the court to um, make some ruling on the subpoena. So is the ability for an attorney to, or and a client, to quash a subpoena, that can happen anytime, anywhere, or yeah. just because we are the election board? No. When I was... When I was a prosecutor, if I issued a subpoena for someone, if that person would have standing to go into court and quash it. And so it's, it's not a subpoena just because it, it, that right to quash the subpoena isn't because it's just the election board, but across the board, if you get a subpoena, you have a right to question or challenge okay. the issue. It. Thank you. Discussion, sorry. Um, he, Mr. Bender is being accused by us, we're suspecting he's committed a crime. He has an absolute right not to speak on that. Sure. So anytime we issue a subpoena, he can come in and say, I don't want to speak. According to the, the uh, Molly's memo, and I agree completely, due process requires we give him an opportunity to speak. And I think we should invite him to come to this meeting. But if he doesn't, we can proceed, and in and in in a a civil proceeding like this, we can proceed on the assumption that his silence means his speaking would be would be uh, detrimental. That is, you don't have the right to remain silent in this proceeding, but you do have the right to remain if your a, a case is filed against you by the prosecutor, and that right is being protected at every stage. My feeling is. And number one, if we send a subpoena, we are guaranteeing, and this is based on many years, a long, long, long delay, which will end up with his lawyer saying that he, under, uh, he takes his Fifth Amendment privilege, and we won't have gotten anywhere with those months of delay and use okay. of resources. My feeling is it's sufficient if we give him notice and invite him, and if we get this other information from the landlord that we we've, we've agreed to which will be great and the and the tenants that would be terrific and the other thing we didn't say is we want to make sure we have a copy of the original ids story that february um story we want to get a copy of an original copy of that paper i'm sure the ids would send us a copy of that story i think we already have that already. And we got that's in the record we need to get that in the record but we all ha have all that and he chooses not to testify, um, I have to see the evidence before, you know, I know where I'm coming from, I don't know where I'm going. Where I'm coming from is we've got enough evidence right now for the referral, and if he doesn't rebut it and we get additional evidence. So you're saying that regardless of the subpoena, so should, should he choose to come on his own will mm -hmm. and speak with us? Yeah. That's a sense of goodwill. Yeah. We still have the decision to refer or not to refer. Exactly. Make our public statement. Regardless of whether he speaks or not. Are you arguing, however, if we subpoena and he refuses to comply or it gets quashed or whatever that might be, that is your argument that we still cannot refer then? Or no. it just is going to take forever? And it will take forever. Which I don't disagree with. <laughs> okay, so I'm getting older. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But Tell my re my recollection was when this complaint was first brought to us, 
that we were advised of the parameters in which we could act. Mm -hmm. And one of those parameters was to issue subpoenas. Mm -hmm. We didn't have that right. Okay. And so now, and, and we were all moving forward. Now I feel like the discussion is, yeah, I issue a subpoena, but it can be quashed. So that almost, the unspoken, far, the unspoken part feels like, so why even bother issuing the subpoena because the court could become involved. I am wondering, this is discussion, because to, the two of us are not attorneys. <laughs> Congratulations for graduating law school. Um, if we maybe the best thing for the sake of discussion, transparency, um, that we take the middleman out of this, the middleman being the election board, and perhaps consider turning this over to the state police or the prosecutor directly because they then can issue subpoenas. Or you mean pre hearing? Without a hearing, just we we have done what we know to do, and we were moving forward within the rights that we have. Prepared to either hear a plausible explanation for this, or we have no explanation. Something is amiss, and refer to the prosecutor. That perhaps we now just look at eliminating the middleman. My only question is, I, I don't know, and I I wish someone was here to help us on this for guidance, but I don't, my, can we, I don't think we can refer without coming to that conclusion at the hearing. I think that's where we'll, we'll get hung up. While, <coughs> while I don't disagree with you, I would love to turn this over to anyone that has way more power than I do what are your thoughts on that? I'm not, everything I've read, I don't know that we can do that without having a hearing first. I mean, here, here's the thing, and I believe I've said this in a previous meeting. If there is nothing to see here and that comes out, I have no issue going, okay, we, we got a complaint. We looked into it right. to the best of our ability. Um, I, I feel that I've I've made that piece clear. I'm not trying to frame somebody for something they didn't do, but there seems to be something on the table when on no fewer than three occasions, someone in their own handwriting wrote an address to and used it as an address to declare candidacy wrote that address in their handwriting three times under penalty of whatever whatever you want to use, penalty of perjury, um, making a false statement is a crime, whatever the legal jargon is, they wrote that address. Something is off for the sake of Monroe County voters and our putting on elections of integrity in this county. I want to know what that something is so that no candidate going forward, excuse me, <coughs> no candidate going forward ever considers doing anything like this again. If you wanna call it, if they were testing the system, that needs to come out. This is not partisan. This is not trying to frame anybody. This is, we need to know as an election board what went on here. And then turn if it needs to be turned over to somebody, we turn it over. If it does not and it needs to die here, fine. But if the issue, as it sounds to me, and perhaps the view, the perspective I'm looking at is not the right perspective, I'm open to that. If the courts are gonna be involved anyway, only a prosecutor can charge and state police that they investigate things every day. Turn this over to more capable hands no offense, <laughs> I'm no. telling on myself to turn this over to capable hands and let them investigate. And if there's charges, turn it to the prosecutor. If there's no charges, we did everything that we could because this person is not, he's had an opportunity to come forward. Where I disagree with you is the only way we can turn this over to authorities with more authority than we have is to make the referral to the prosecutor. 
And I then don't the prosecutor that. refers it, sends it to the, I think the, the, that it would go to the state, to the Bloomington police because the crime took place in Bloomington and it's not, not the, the kind the, of thing. But the forms he signed are state forms. Yeah, I don't, I don't care where the <laughs> prosecutor sends it for investigation. I think that Molly's memo said it would go to DPD, but I don't care. What I'm saying is the only way to get that, the, 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 the simplest way by far for us to deal with it is say, is to have a hearing, and at the end of that hearing, we're gonna have a vote. And we've already decided some people should be subpoenaed. I am strongly against trying to subpoena Mr. Bender himself. I think that that's, that that's going to get us nowhere because he's never going to testify unless he wants to. He has an absolute right not to testify when we're alleging a crime. So to us, to us or anybody ever in well, any criminal proceeding, he always can only voluntarily testify. If he chooses to come testify to us, great. I'd love to hear what he has to say. If he doesn't choose to testify, a subpoena him is just going to drag this out, you know, and and it's not going to affect the end. In the end, we're going to look at the evidence we do have available and say refer or don't refer. And, and what I've seen now where I'm coming from is I'd refer. No, I don't know where I'm going to until we have the hearing and, and see the evidence. So... <clears throat> this muddies the water, but I don't disagree with either of you. The issue is that I think, would you be willing to um, take some advice from counsel? Can we, can we talk to whoever that might be in the meantime from the hearing to find out if one of our potential referral remedies is to turn it over to someone other than a prosecutor mm -hmm. For, for further investigation prior to being referred to a prosecutor rather than us going straight to them. Because I don't disagree with you. I, I, I would love nothing more than to hand everything we have to someone that can do something about it. I mean, we're, for all intents and purposes, we're quite helpless. There's not much, all we can do is hand it over to someone that can do something because we believe that something did happen that was not legal. We, we, we can't fine, we can't put anybody in jail, we're not judges, we're not lawyers. Well, we're lawyers, but we're not lawyers in this capacity, right? Yes, <laughs> yes. so. Let me, let me, I was. Okay, I'm retired. fair enough. But um, I don't know, I don't disagree with you that we should, or at least attempt to do something to that effect, but I don't know that we can make any of those decisions without the hearing first. Does that make sense? It does. So when you say, uh, when you re were referring to counsel, when you said, would you accept counsel, who who are you? IED, anybody to, to find out whether or not can we, Molly through, you know, through IED, whatever that might be, can we, you know, the only thing I know, I've read is prosecutor or attorney general, right? Is, is are, those are our two remedies to turn over our investigation for, prosecution essentially. And so I don't know if there is a third avenue, but I would love to explore that. Here, here's what my concern is. As we've been talking today, because again, I walked into this believing to get to the bottom of this, we had the authority to issue subpoenas. Then it almost feels like it would be worthless because right. it could be quashed. What does a complaint to the election board mean? And if, if what the discussion is producing is not a hill of beans, it feels like Mr. Bender would not take seriously what I am trying to get across, which is you can't do this. You cannot say you live in a residence, you cannot put an address on candidacy papers and say, I live here and I am qualified to be a candidate because I reside in this district. And if that is the case. And it comes to light that you don't live here. If this had never come to light, how would this play out? 
And I wasn't looking for this. I would not know Mr. Bender if he walked in this room right now. I was not looking for this. I got a day job. I got other things I can be doing. What does it mean and how seriously do you take running for office and how seriously do you take the election board when you, in your own handwriting, three times put an address on a piece of, on a candidacy intended to run as a candidate and you don't live there? And a legitimate complaint was filed before the election board. There's been a window of time that this person had to say, hey, here's what really happened. I don't know. I have, <laughs> I have probably wasted more time than I should in my own mind thinking, what plausible reason could yes. that have happened? Did he try to purchase that property with the owner? Which again is why I, I'd like to talk to the owner. Did he make you an offer to purchase and you changed your other mind? Did he think he'd be living there and be able to be sworn in, you know, after election day? There are some things that that owner could answer in the spirit of right. we, I respect you as a board and I want you to get to the bottom of this because this involves my property. So now it feels, and I'm just telling you how it feels with me. You all are free to feel how you feel. It feels like what has come out in this meeting is a complaint before the board means absolutely nothing. And that means somebody will do this again. Ergo, let's, <laughs> in my humble opinion, consider, I'm not saying we have to make a decision today. We've got a May 18th hearing date set. In my opinion, let's consider turning what we have in good faith over to the state police and say, if there are charges to be had here, we trust you. If there are no charges, please report back to the election board. And we move forward with it because we don't want this to drag on. We've got a presidential. I'm sorry I, you're going to miss know, that, but. I just don't know that we can do that though. That's what, you know what I mean? I'm not, I, I think that's a brilliant idea. Thank you. I, I just don't know that we can do it without having the hearing first. That's my only concern. I Hi, election board. I left the room, but I joined in virtually. Can you hear me? Yes. That's Molly, I take it. Did you say? Is, is that our, our county attorney, Molly? Okay. Good. We hear you. We don't hear you. The only, the only potential thing that comes from, correct me if I'm, I'm stating this wrong, the, the win for not subpoenaing him is that he doesn't have the choice to plead the fifth with us. He does, but he-, he I'm won't. sorry, well, yeah. he, he, he doesn't have the choice to legally to, to say, you know, to file a quash and blah, blah, blah. Right. It's an invitation, if you come, you, you come, if not, you don't. Can, is there a happy medium? Can if if there's a hearing, we invite him mm -hmm. to Absolutely. the hearing. Absolutely. And if if he does not care to discuss or offer anything that we refer to an independent party like the state police. Nicole, who has, uh, yeah. Clerk Brown, I apologize. I I'm could tell Nicole. you. I could tell you right now, if we invite Mr. Bender as an invitee to a hearing and he does not show up, there is no question in my mind that I am voting, I will make the motion without having 32 seconds of the meeting of the hearing to refer him. That, I can tell you that right now. <coughs> and I'm, the I'm, motion. I'm, huh? I would second the motion. Well, there you go. And, and uh, I don't wanna hear any open door stuff about making decisions before it is because this is a public meeting and we're talking about what we might be doing Okay, so the thing is, I can I can not only tell you that that would be my intention. That I mean, I can almost that that's my word. There's no there's no there would we we don't have any other remedy, right? Okay, on your word, and I promise I have paid <laughs> attention to everything you said. It appears that there is something in the chat, so I don't know if that's advice to us. I don't know if somebody in the public has a question. Good point. We didn't get the um, monitor today. 
like we typically would so that we could see that? Is there any chance that we can have some technical assistance to figure out what's in that chat so that we don't leave anybody out of what we all want to be this transparent discussion? Thank you for that. Is there anybody in the loft? I don't think so. Well, they're oh, up they're there. up there. Is there a loft man? They don't want to be on TV. <laughs> are, you able to, are you able to put the chat on one of these TVs so we can see them? Is that something we can do? No, I don't. All right. Um, we had somebody bring we'll us. We'll just turn it. I'll just turn it. Do you need some help? I just turn it around and we'll be able to see it? Yeah. So I think, so where I was going with that was I think there's the positive to the non citizen is that we're asking someone to come in on their own volition and they don't want to take the We got our answer. The positive to a subpoena is the seriousness of the, 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 the issue before us. Right. I think, I mean, I think there's positives to both. I, I, on the con side, I think the con of inviting rather than issuing a subpoena is significantly less <coughs> than the potential for <coughs> a legal motion to quash, whether right or not, by the way, I disagree with as well. I think that's, um, well, I think that it's garbage that there's an attorney involved in the first place. That's just me. Um, you know, it, this is a, if there weren't an, wasn't an issue in the first place, then just come forward. But um, the, the con for the subpoena is that we could go through a very lengthy process, potentially unneedingly, if we're gonna get to the same spot. Does that make sense? Um. I don't like it either, <laughs> trust me. I don't, I don't like it, I don't like it. You know, I, I guess that, that because we work so hard, and I am so proud of Monroe County and the elections <coughs> that we put on here, that um, I don't want there to be undue delay. I'm cognizant of an election, <laughs> um, but I don't want there to be undue delay. And so if I, I want the hearing, but if it's going to be for naught in terms of you're not gonna get a plausible explanation. Most people respond to the state police reaching out saying, I'd like to speak to you about some things. Most Which, people respond to a letter from the prosecutor. Absolutely. We'd like to speak with you. But that's the next step for us, right? That's the next step. Now, if to you be, take the first step seriously, that's correct. the next step. So, well, it would be our next step regardless. Whether, whether we believe that it's been taken seriously or not, our next step is either we, we do nothing or we do something. Those are really our only options. But I would like to, I, I think it's important to publicly note regarding the state police, or the Bloomington police, the prosecutor, whoever it might be, um, I'm certainly not in their shoes, but uh, perhaps they pay attention to these lovely and terribly exciting um, public board meetings within this beautiful courthouse um, I don't think that there's anything stopping any of those folks of going out and doing ex the exact investigation that we're talking about um, based on the same newspaper article that we started with, um, to be clear. Yeah. Did we ever figure out the chat? Yeah, do we have the chat pulled up? Yeah, that's fine. Well, they're not questions. It says there's four in the other screen. Well, those may be participants. Could you guys just give us an affirmative that there are no questions in the chat screen, please? Thank you. Okay, so I think that's, I don't know what that would be. Maybe just folks talking back to one another. Just for the record, we have attempted to acknowledge anybody that may be in the chat, um, whether that's council or the public, we, we don't know at this point. And we thank you for yes. reaching out. So we do have a motion on the table. We don't have a second. What's the most recent motion? Please excuse most, me. <laughs> the, the most recent motion was yours to subpoena Mr. Bender. So now that, and we've had a lengthy discussion on that. So 
I would uh, offer, I would just offer, do you wish to amend that motion, withdraw it, or do we have a second? I think those are our only options. I want to hear what you have to say. Fine, further discussion. I'm okay with that. That's option D. <laughs> uh, I think the I think the best thing we can do to say don't mess with the county with with the election process is to get this as quickly as can to the prosecutor if that's what we think needs to be done. The quickest way for us to get it to the prosecutor and the professionals is to uh, uh, set the hearing and then vote at that hearing whether we want to submit it. Number two, I, the, my experience is that the, the police rarely investigate unless somebody asks them to. If we ask the state police or Bloomington Police Department to investigate they probably will because we're a, a county agency. And if we ask them, they probably will. And I guess what, you, what you're thinking is if they say, well, we've straightened this all out. And, and it turns out he meant to break down 414 and he wrote down 416 and he's dyslexic and he got this all wrong but he really lived there and uh, lived in that district or whatever. I'm just making up S silly excuses, you know. That, that would have come to light. It would come to light. That's exactly right. That would have come to it light. Would've it would have come to light. And so so uh, I think the, well, I think it's true that we could probably request and as a courtesy, they would certainly investigate. The BPD would investigate. And it would probably be BPD because it took place in their jurisdiction and it's a violation of a state law, but that's what they, but that's not important. Plus, they're easier to talk to than the state police, if you'll excuse my, my attitude there. And, but that's not the point. My point is, I think the, the fewer the steps we take to responsibly send this to the prosecutor, the quicker, the better it'll get there. So we can go on with other responsibilities, which are mounty, you know, many. And now let me just admit here, I don't know whether the prosecutor is going to prosecute, but that's something we can't control. So your argument, what I think you're getting at, is that should we not subpoena and invite? And then we do make the determination to refer. And then the prosecutor, state police, BPT, BPD, whoever that might be, chooses not to investigate and or prosecute, then we have done nothing in terms of seriousness without a subpoena. Is that where you're going with, with yeah. that? Yeah, this is not That's something good. that should be swept under the rug. It, it should not be, oh, I'll just withdraw. Mm -hmm. It's okay, mm -hmm. I'm just withdrawing because what incentive would there be for you to never, for? anybody to never think about doing anything like this again. Don't test the system. You will fail. This came out. It, it was not hidden. It came, it came, sadly, it came out too late to not put the name on the ballot. But you, you just don't. And I want this to be expeditious because we have a presidential I believe, and this is just Nicole Brown, that historically it will be the most scrutinized election in the history of elections. I agree, especially Monroe County. And so before anybody else is tempted to put an address in their handwriting down on three separate pieces of candidacy paperwork and voter registration paperwork, I want them to understand that will not happen here in Monroe County. It will not without there being consequences. Don't disagree. I can amend or defer if you have a better motion. Well, if we, we've only got a couple, it's gotta be amended, we've gotta let it die, or we gotta have a second, well, if the discussion is over. I do not think we should subpoena Mr. Bender. And I'm then not I gonna will, vote. And you've made a compelling argument for, for, for why not. Um, so, so I think, I, you know, I'm not gonna second it because I don't wanna. I will withdraw. Okay. My motion. So, there's no motion on the table. So, so um, do we have, 
a new motion uh, regarding Mr. Bender in this hearing that has been set? Well, I think we should, we should th there's already a letter, which unfortunately I guess I haven't seen drafted, that, that invites Mr. Bender to, if I understand it, to, to come to a hearing, which we're gonna set today, I have no idea if there's a letter. Okay, well, there was something about, we, we said we were going to look into four things. The, the criminal statute and the other three statutes that we think may have been violated. Okay, we talked about that. that. The, we just decided that was the, the, the gist of the hearing. Th those were the items that we were going to be right. discussing. At the so if those are the things that we're going to be discussing at the hearings, we should give him notice of all the things we're discussing at the hearing that involve him. And, and what the possible consequences are, and the possible consequence. But I think we can work with Molly, and, and I've got a letter I've sent to her, and I think I've learned today other, other stuff, and I think Molly will come up with a fine notice letter, which- So, um, I don't, you didn't make a motion, correct? You were just making comments. Uh, I, okay, yes, thank you. I move that we ask the county attorney to notify Mr. Bender of the upcoming hearing and invite him to attend, tell him the matters we're looking into and what consequences he might face if we find that there has been a violation of statute. I, th I think that's already, I, I don't know about the second part, but you're welcome to make that motion. I would ask, would you please add to your motion um, the lease that he noted in the original IDS article that we would invite him to bring that as well. Sure. Wonderful. Do we have a second? I will second. Okay. So since we don't have anyone to call the roll, I would just say all the ayes. Please say aye. Guy Lofman, aye. Aye. Nicole Brown, aye. And aye. Motion passes. Um, okay. Uh, so we have a hearing date. We have our invitees and. Uh, There's a check. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Some something has been written. I can't. Uh, I, I saw it for a moment. I don't know who that is. Um, I don't know who that is. But. Is there any way to get technical, <laughs> excuse me, technical assistance for whatever just popped up on you the know, chat? If I if we pulled this up on our cell phone, this meeting yeah, up on I, our I, cell phone, we could probably get to the chat. Do we have a, the, uh, oh, there it is. Oh. <laughs> so I, can anybody read that? I can't begin to read it from here. So there's a question. Now I do want to be clear. We don't. We haven't opened up any public uh, comment, uh, but there is a question. Um, and as the chair, I will honor that. Uh, and someone says, "Can Mr. Laughlin's letter be made part of the meeting's public record as well?" I would say no because that is not a public piece of paper. Um, it's something that a member drafted that has not been chosen to go anywhere. So should it be, should we be using that letter? I would argue that that is, that then becomes public, but I've not even read this, so I would say no. Is that the only? Yes, and then could you please move that up, TSD? I have no idea, these guys are tech people. <laughs> I apologize, but I have no idea. I don't even know where the cameras are and all that good stuff, so. Is there any way to get a copy of the chat and and print print it out for all of us. Well, we can read it. There's nothing that we need to address in there. Those are yeah. Please do, but we don't have a, a. This is a work session. We don't have a public comment section. And we don't have an agenda. But I I think it is important, right, <coughs> for that last comment. I'm not going to make any letter public because I haven't even read it. So I don't even know what it is. Is that fair? <laughs> yeah, no. it's, a, it's a very straightforward letter to, to Mr. Bender saying you're invited to appear and this is what yeah. might happen. And, we'll, when, when, and the county attorney will draft a letter which will be certainly more complete than mine because my right. So we have two letter. letters to review from county. Is there more? Yes. No, that's the last one, Clerk Brown. Yes. So we have a hearing. We have who we're inviting. So just to recap real quick, mm -hmm. the hearing dates the 18th, one o'clock uh, here. Um, we are inviting um, Mr. Bender and his a copy of his lease. 
and his counsel. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. sure well, we that's would on be. him. We're inviting him. We're not inviting anyone else. Yeah. We're inviting okay. him. Okay, so if it was Molly a subpoena, take, it Molly would be. will take care of that. She'll probably invite him care of his attorney. Yeah, that's to me, that is we're inviting him. Mm -hmm. Um, and not to cut you off, I'm just saying that's I, okay. That's not relevant to what we're doing. Um, and then we are also inviting uh, the homeowner uh, and a copy of the lease and then noting in that invitation that should they choose not to um, attend the meeting, they are welcome to provide a written statement. Yeah, we is that, a, free, yeah, we is that a fair summary? A yes. Okay. We would, how did she say, we can't ask him to create something. We can't compel him to create something that doesn't already exist, but we can invite him in lieu of attendance to write a written statement. Right, so we can't ask him for a letter that doesn't exist is what Molly had said. So, the, so then um, I, I feel the, um, the excitement in the air as we are ending this meeting, but I would, <laughs> we, did, we did receive um, correspondence from, um, I, I just wanna make this, this part of the record. We, we received right before this meeting correspondence from um, Mr. Bender's counsel um, and there are, there are certainly things in there uh, that request, the, the previous correspondence requested an answer and uh, some sort of uh, bona fide guarantee that we would not investigate any further due to withdrawal, so on and so forth. Um, but I just, I feel it is important to make a comment for the record. Uh, Mr. Bender's counsel does say that any um, and I'm paraphrasing, but any further investigation would be political in nature. I want to make a comment um, for the record that this board is comprised of two Democrats and one Republican, uh, one appointed Democrat, one appointed Republican, and one elected official who is a Democrat. So uh, I'm pretty sure folks don't eat their own. So <laughs> if this is political, that would be news to me. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make that comment. Um, if anyone has anything else to say on that, they're welcome to, but uh, I think this is anything but political. Okay. Um, and that's where I stand. <laughs> I, I stand in agreement with you. This is not a partisan issue. This is what is the right thing to do. You cannot put an address, file an, I have been a candidate. I have to put the address where I live. I do have a mailing address, I, I have a post office box, but where I lay my head, where my physical address is what made me a qualified candidate for an office in Monroe County. And I, again, don't know this person. Um, this is not a partisan issue. Uh, they made a reference to a statement that I said, uh, as far as setting a precedent because we were not pursuing an investigation. I did not, I certainly did not mean to convey that we were letting someone withdraw. Um, what I meant to say was you, ju you just can't do that. And then the, and just, I'm withdrawing that the precedent it sets is you can provide false information and all you have to do if, if it comes out is withdraw. And that makes it okay. I am not gonna be a party to sweeping this under the rug. If, if it, it's either gonna come out that there is nothing to see here, or it's gonna come out, you got a problem and you just hope that you weren't gonna, that it wasn't gonna come to light. Whichever way, I can live with whichever way it is. I just want it resolved before we go into the most scrutinized election in the history of <coughs> my lifetime, certainly. I think that's consistent um, with all of our feelings. And I felt like there was something else that said that there was a reference to spending resources to investigate this and here to get to the truth, you got to spend some resources. But that was also why I made the point that if, if anybody would be worried about resources, then the state police already has investigatory resources. Mm -hmm. The prosecutor already has resources for charging people who are, who have been accused of something that is not legal. So if they're worried about election expenses, okay, that would be why I would say 
let them do it. Let, let an independent. And along those lines, I will, before I entertain a motion to adjourn, I, I will um, note that I'm happy to take up the um, offering Molly the question about other than attorney general or prosecutor, can we refer to a different investi investigatory body like the state police? Because I think that's important. I don't know we, if it's can we, like you said, this is our board. I don't know if it's can we. Well, according to code, uh, what I don't know is all I've read in code is option A or B, attorney AG right. or local prosecutor. Right. So. But if we, if it's not apropos, they'll say, I'm sorry, we can't take your, we can't do this. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. But I wanna know the answer though, the, that's important. The, from my perspective, we have the right to investigate. Thank you. We which have we, the right, correct. which we are doing. If we want to say we would like the Bloomington Police Department or the state police to help us with this investigation, that would be, we don't have the right to demand it of them, but no. the chances are pretty good they do it. Well, then we can do that at our hearing because that's when we're determining that that is the investigation. My feeling is if I already know everything I need to know at the end of that hearing for my vote, I don't need to 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 go to, yeah to, to to do anything else if I know that I'm satisfied that we should refer it or not refer it. The only thing that I want to say because you haven't been here is mm -hmm. what I understood from Molly is that Bloomington Police's role would be to deliver the subpoenas because we're talking oh, about a municipal. I thank you for reading. Do you see more, what I'm saying? For reading so, more carefully than me. Right. She said be, right. they deliver the subpoenas on yes, our behalf yeah. because yeah. it's a municipal election. Yeah. So that's why I feel it would be the state police because it's these are state forms that he signed and then the state police would refer to the prosecutor or what but if that's not what you heard i'm open to no i i, I, I don't disagree with, with that I, and and i don't if we any if if we choose to refer it i'm not going to care who we refer it to it i i and i i don't think we should consider referring it until after the hearing if after the hearing we, we can't feel, we well I think we could, but I don't want to. <laughs> you so, know. so if state police, like you said, because of articles that are in the paper and things, if state police saw that and decided to investigate it themselves, <laughs> they're that, independent of us. You're good? Sure. I don't think we have a choice of being good. I think that's, that's, that's their completely, pr that's their prerogative. That's their right? prerogative. But I, if they have, were doing that, they might have let us know. Well, you would hope. I, right. And, and, and before we, we adjourn, I want to get my two cents in on that. Get you your know, two cents in. On go that, go. that political, um, uh, you know, if you rob a bank and then say, but here I'm giving the money back after you've been caught, that doesn't, that's you not a defense. stole the words from my mouth. It's not a defense to robbing the bank. It's not if, a remedy to robbing the bank it, either. No. And, and it might be mitigating. It might make you feel like, well, we don't need to throw as big a book at him. We can give him a smaller sentence or whatever. But it doesn't, it, it doesn't mean the crime wasn't committed. And it, and it looks to me like a crime was committed based what I know so far. And, and the fact that he then withdrew or tried to withdraw um, doesn't, after this had all come out. It doesn't negate. It doesn't negate it. And I don't think he tried to withdraw before this came out. I think he tried to withdraw after this came out. So correct. It, it, it's so to me, um, frankly, I, I would as, as as gladly eat a Democrat or a Republican oh who, had, who had who uh, had who uh, had um, violated these laws. I don't care. I don't care what the party is. If you're going to violate these laws and I'm sitting here with the responsibility to enforce them. And I'm happy that you have that view as well. That's the most important piece Absolutely. that a bipartisan board is in agreement that this is not a partisan issue. Wonderful. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. No. Oh. What? No, we're, we're adjourned till the hearing. Not. No. What do you mean? Let's recess until the hearing in case something happens and we have to come back. Okay. Uh, I'm point. sorry, not recess. Recess until we have an election board meeting in April. Correct. Unless something comes to light and we need to call 48 well, we hours could, notice. We could notice it. 
What do you think? I, I, I'm happy to do what it doesn't. That's irrelevant to me. If you guys want we, to we are at that window of time, and I'm sure this happened when you were served on the election board too, where we're within 60 days of the election, and we would be recessing anyway in case we have to come back. We have back. a 48 hour notice rule for recess as well. If Correct. We don't do it right now. You would rather adjourn, Mr. Chair? No, I don't. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just making that point. It, to me, it doesn't. It seems we may as well. It's it's it. There, we might be saving a staff if we recess. There's no, there's we have no a motion. I move that we recess. I second. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you.